Welcome to Chile IT IBM Storewise HyperSwap introduction. Here we have typical hardware infrastructure for an iSeries estate. We have a tape for backups, HMC for system configuration, IBM Power System providing CPU and memory for your VMs and logical partitions, IBM Storewise array which provides disk capacity for your partitions. Many customers have all flash arrays. These can be V7000s, V5030s, SVCs, any hardware running Spectrum virtualized version 8 software uh, can run HyperSwap. We've also got sand fabric switches for redundant disk connections. HyperSwap protects us against complete loss of a storage device. So that's what we're focusing on here. Now, how do I bring in HyperSwap to my current infrastructure? So we start off with our original infrastructure, but notice we add a new control enclosure. We can now configure the two independent control enclosures to act as one. This becomes our HyperSwap cluster, which is managed through a single interface. It's easy to deploy if you currently run IBM Storewide. There's no downtime to configure a second control enclosure into your existing Storewise. There's no downtime for data to be synced across both devices. Here's a schematic to show your new level of resilience. Data is synchronously kept in sync between two control enclosures without using extra resource or further configuration on the IBM Power Server. Note that the two cluster control enclosures are given a site name to allow them to be identified. Here we have a default name of site 1 and site 2. HyperSwap provides a resilience of placing the control enclosures into different physical racks. As long as there is a suitable fibre channel link between data centres, then HyperSwap can be run across campus. This allows a DR capability to be built in the second data centre as shown here production side and DR side. Now let's watch HyperSwap in action on a real IBM I partition. So I have four displays for my HyperSwap demo. At the top here I've got a ping to my IBM I partition. Down at the bottom I've got a work at job just showing jobs running. I've got the storewise GUI and then down here I've got the system service tools. You'll notice that my partition has only two disks here, but when I show you the active paths, we'll see that there's actually eight paths presented by HyperSwap to the IBM I partition. There are two active paths and the rest are passive. What we'll see is the paths changing as HyperSwap kicks in when a control enclosure fails. So onto my storewise GUI. Notice I've got two sites listed here. Each one of those has its own control enclosure. When I go into the host section, it shows my IBM I partition in site one. So this determines the active paths when everything's looking good. So I'm now gonna power off the control enclosure in site one to demonstrate hyperswap. So here's my control enclosure, power off enclosure, type in the confirmation code, and away we go. As the enclosure powers down, the paths will change, but the system will stay active. So the enclosure has started to come down now, it's powering itself off. We see some errors showing that the enclosure is no longer available. I've got my active job still running, and my ping is still running. Let's have a look now at the paths. So when I refresh this screen, we notice we have some failed paths. So I've still got my active paths, which is still on the same disks, but some of the paths have failed. This is the state as the control enclosure is coming down. I refresh again, and we notice that the Storewise GUI is now reporting that the enclosure is completely powered off. I refresh my paths, and we'll see those failing over to the two new paths. So the system is still active and my paths are failing over as we speak.
and here we see our original path that was active has now failed and I have new, two new active paths. My jobs are still running and my ping still continuing. So HyperSwap has kicked in and has, con and has re retained the system availability. My system overview, I've completely lost my control enclosure in site one. When I show my remote copy, it's showing now that I have my two relationships, they've been switched and my primary volumes are now the site two volumes. So HyperSwap has kicked in and has failed over seamlessly while my jobs stay active.